Hey everybody, welcome to Outlier On Air, episode 419. This is the podcast where we talk to the founders, disruptors, and mavens of the world. As always, I'm your host, Ever Gonzalez. Thank you for being with us. On today's episode, we have Lucy Kopp. Lucy is a producer, writer, and activist currently residing in East LA. For the past four years, she has volunteered in and out of the prison system on behalf of an organization called PREP, Partnership for Reentry Program, located in South LA. Lucy also began Life on the Outside, a monthly podcast about returning to society after decades of incarceration. Now, I got to meet Lucy at the LA Podcast Festival in LA this past September, and I was really interested in her story. She's obviously a great storyteller, so we invited her to come on our show to talk all about it. We talk about her show, the inmates that she meets on a regular basis, and why she produces this type of show when she could be doing just about anything else with her life. I really think you're going to enjoy Lucy. I really think you're going to enjoy this episode. So without further ado, here we go. Lucy, welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Man, I'm very excited to have you on the show today just because um, I, I met you at our Outlier Podcast Festival in LA this past September. Yep. We, we talked briefly. It was crazy for us. You know, we're trying to run the show, but I was trying to meet as many people as possible. But what you're doing with, with your show and just with life in general uh, kind of stuck with me. So I, I'm glad that uh, you accepted my request to, to talk to you again afterward because I think what you're doing is going to resonate with a lot of the people that listen to this show. You know, we're outliers. We're doing things that we're passionate about, things that are a little bit different, and you certainly fit that bill. So, uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, before we kind of get into this, tell us why you're an outlier. Oh, man. Well, first of all, that festival was amazing. I met so many cool people, so many great panels, so thank you. Awesome. That's that. good to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, it really was awesome. Um, and it was down the street from me, so that's great. <laughs> Even better. Oh, my- <laughs> What makes me an outlier? I think what makes me an outlier is I'm I I don't really care to go with the direction the crowd is going in, and I've always felt that way ever since. I think I started feeling it most in middle school, um, and I couldn't like find myself when I was in like big groups of kids or. Um, yeah, I just, I didn't feel comfortable. And I, where I ended up feeling more comfortable is like being somewhere on the outside of things and looking in because, yeah, I just, I don't know. I really like, I also really like perspective. So I like being able to see things from a distance and that also goes for like social situations and, you know. It's funny because you're, you're, you were very pleasant when I met you. You're right. You're very personable. We, we chatted for a bit. It was, it wasn't awkward. Um, so it's not like, you know, you're, you're, um, extremely shy or just kind of have that, you know, social, social anxiety type of stuff. You just kind of want to hang back a little bit. It feels like, and just observe, which that's a good way to put it. Hang back. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. (laughs) Good for you. We need more people like that. I think Yeah. (laughs) in this world of look at me, look at me, right. Type of, uh, uh, situations and individuals. No, that that's, that's perfect. Now let's get into kind of the meat of this and then we'll kind of work our way backwards. Uh, the, the reason that I wanted to have you on the show was because you, your, your show life on the outside, this monthly podcast that you produce, it's in its first season. Um, and mm-hmm. it's, it's something that I enjoy and not just something that I enjoy, but I mean, you're getting some, some press and you're getting some awards and you know, you're, you're making it on the top, uh, list of 2018 uh, of podcasts. And I mean, so you're doing some cool things and people are, are noticing this. So let's introduce you to our audience. Life on the Outside, what's the show about? How does it work? So it's a monthly podcast where I have conversations with people who are returning from prison after really long sentences. So decades and decades and decades of incarceration. Um, it ranges, I think, it ranges from about 20 years to almost 50 years. Whoa. So um, life on the outside is, is very literal in that way. It's, it's literally, you know, they're not inside a prison. They're, they're living life on the outside. And the focus is, um, we use the word reentry 
which is talking about that, that transition from prison back into society and everything that it comes with. I mean, the frustrations, the challenges, the joys, um, you know, people have to learn how to use a cell phone again. They have to open their very first bank account. They have to learn how to drive. It's just, you're kind of thrown back into the world. If you went in when you were 18 years old in 1979, and you get out, you know, a 56-year-old man, a 60-year-old man, or woman, um, you're just, you're met with, you're met with, well, in this case, Los Angeles. And how do you, how do you navigate that? So it's that is a- what podcast is about yeah such an interesting topic um and one that's quite frankly i never thought about right of course there are these stories out there but i'm busy living my life um never really thought about the impact of on on somebody's life that has been behind bars that many years but surely there must be some great stories obviously you're capturing them um but my question is and my curiosity is kind of kill me from the from the very first time that i met you and you talked about this this the the podcast that you have why this what i mean mm-hmm. out of all the different topics that you can be doing uh for your show why this why now yeah so i came into this podcast as already as a volunteer in this community for about 4 years so i was really familiar with it in some ways i'd been going into prison for a number of years and working with people on the outside Um, And that was volunteer work. And then in the other part of my life, I was working in film or TV. Really, the the passion being storytelling in some capacity. Um, And then, yeah, a podcast seemed like a good fit to share some of these stories. Um, So that's that's really why the topic I was I was already pretty involved and uh, I mean, yeah, the story, every, I mean, everyone has a story period, but like you said, these are stories that are not heard often and they're definitely, you know, people that are going through something that not a lot of people go through. Um, And then why now that's actually, um, yeah, I mean, this is something people have been experiencing ever since we've had prisons, but actually like in California today, like today being, let's say 2018, is a really good time to look at this um, topic or issue because for the first time in a long time, this community, we call them, or they refer to themselves sometimes as lifers, which is anyone sentenced to life in prison, they're actually getting out in like really huge increasing numbers because we have an amazing governor, Jerry Brown, who is commuting people, he's pardoning people, and he's letting lifers who've been in for you know decades, he's letting them out of prison and giving them a second chance. So more and more lifers are coming home, and thus there are more and more people to, to share their story with. How do you pick the individuals that you're going to uh, focus on? So it started off just being the people that I knew the best, and they were um, people that I volunteered with at an organization in South LA, and I just asked them, and they were super willing. And then from there, um, it was kind of just word of mouth, hey, can you introduce me to someone else? Or they would say, hey, you know, I have a buddy, he just got out, or, um, you know, I know this woman that goes to this group I go to. So they're... Yeah, there's a there's a growing community. So, oh, I, I guess just you know, as a storyteller and podcaster too, you do want to share a compelling story. So just you know, like sometimes certain people will stand out to me for a reason, and I'll you know try and track them down. You know, as I sit here and I think about what that would be like, um, what are some of the big changes or some of the, the big struggles or challenges that that they might have after being in prison for so long and right top of the list. I think um, as they come back in society, technology would be a big one, right? Yeah. That's but a really what, big one. What else do you see uh, that maybe is a common thread of, amongst all of the people that you've interviewed that, that they're struggling with or that kind of surprised them? Yeah. So it's interesting. I, I hear from a lot of people that at least within the first days and weeks of getting released, they have this, kind of anxiety with the amount of choices that are available. Um, 
So for example, a lot of them will go to Target or um, you know, they'll, they'll go to some store to get new clothes because they don't have any or go grocery shopping. And um, it's interesting because I've actually heard veterans say this too, but there's, you know, when they went in, there might have been one bag of chips or one <laughs> brand of pants, but uh, now they're just completely overwhelmed. And it's been like three or four different interviews now where they have the like exact same story in different scenarios. And um, like the feeling is just anxiety, like to the point of sweating and being really nervous and having to leave the voices. It's the sounds and just the whole, it's like sensory overload. Um, have you have you talked to anybody that, that is struggling to the point where uh, they want back in? That's a good question. Um, it's something that is brought up in Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. I, yeah, yes. Not, yes, but not, not necessarily back in, but there's an acknowledgement that life in there became it became home, you know? If, if you're in there for 30 years, you've got your job, you wake up, you go to the chow hall, you do your, you know, you do your work and you go back to your cell and you've got everything set up. Um, it's, yeah, it becomes your routine. It becomes your way of life. So there is a struggle for many on the outside to figure out what their routine is, to figure out where they belong. And that's the other thing, when you're in prison for that long, you know what your place is, you know what your role is, you know how people see you. Um, you know, if you're part of the Christian uh, group, that's who you are. If you're part of, you know, if you're big into education, that's who you are. Um, if you're still in the gangs, that's who you are. So there is a, yeah, it's a, it's a struggle out here for a lot of people to figure out, well, who am I and where do I fit in? You know, I think as storytellers, we, we obviously want to tell good stories and, and uh, share it with the world. Um, and you going into this project, I'm assuming whether you wanted to or not, already had some idea of what this was going to look like, I, I'm assuming. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But what, what surprised you about the, the entire process with, with the, the people that you interview, with getting the interviews, with producing the show, all of this? What has been the biggest surprise to you? Oh my gosh, the biggest surprise, I'm actually surprised that I know this off the top of my <laughs> head, but the biggest surprise is like the amount of accuracy and details with which people remember certain events in their life. And I suppose that could be true of anyone if you pick them to, you, if you, you know, you ask them to retell something, but it's, it's like, you know, I talked to Thurston, I, I think it was the third episode, it's called Shadows, and he can, um, it didn't all make it into the episode, but he can recall things that happened on the yard in 1981, exactly, you know, <laughs> how the riot went down, who started it, what their names were, like, it's crazy, it's crazy, and they all have I don't know if it's just because everything is stripped away and you're left in just this really isolated environment where only certain things happen in a, over a course of many, many years. But just, yeah, the amount of detail is just, you know, yeah, it's amazing. And then this wasn't even an episode, but this guy, Donnie, he did 29 years and he told this really vivid story about how someone, um, his first day in prison, someone slid a Bible, like, like slid it across um, from what, from his cell to, to Donnie's cell. And he had a page dog-eared. Um, and yeah, th I mean, there were so many details of that story, but it just takes you there and it blows my mind. Overall, what have been some of the challenges for you then? Um, as a, as a podcaster interviewer? Yes. Just, um, just producing the show, everything about it. Oh, man, there are a lot of challenges. Um, I'm, you know, I have an intern who's helping me out now, but, but still, even it's amazing how hard it is to get uh, an episode out a month. Um, you know, I have another job and just, yeah, with life. So the biggest challenge is just editing and getting it out. Um, but, yeah, and then... Yeah, I mean, finding um, finding new kind of things and new 
areas of reentry that maybe I haven't tapped into, like a new emotion that I haven't talked about with someone or an experience. There are a lot of things that are very similar for a lot of people. Um, and so I'm always looking for ways to, to find what's unique to their experience. Um, but were, yeah, were I guess you, the challenges are more like on the technical side. Okay, on the production side. Were you yeah. ever, um, actually first, do you go to their homes? Where, where do you do these interviews? So um, I do most of them at an organization called PrEP. It's the one I mentioned in South LA. Mm -hmm. And I've, just because I've been volunteering there for so long, it's quiet when no one's there. Um, so I do most of the interviews there. Um, I've done one in my house. I've done a few in a studio in Echo Park, but yeah, it's, it's kind of here and there. Um, and with, with the work that you've done, you've been inside of the prisons as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I've, I've gone inside 11 or 12 in California. So you're, you're young, you're attractive, you're female, any, I mean, that's scary for anybody. <laughs> any, any, um, scary moments? I mean, you must be walking in there. Uh, terrified maybe not I don't know I, I think yeah. I would be. Um, so I'd been into prison before in college I was going into a women's prison um, I was part of a group that started a vegetable garden and that um, it's I'll say this it's never been scary for me mm -hmm. I, and it, it could be for other people but my experience has not been one of being scared um, and I go in, I go in with a Catholic nun, right? So uh, <laughs> and she's this legend in the system. Everybody knows her. She has so much respect. Um, so, you know, I, we're in, it's her and I in a room of, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 inmates, um, no guards present. And we just do our workshop and um, never have I ever felt unsafe and the same goes with being on the outside you know i am around um ex-lifers a lot we've gone bowling we've gone uh to volleyball games um and it's weird i've actually said this to other people but i actually feel safer <laughs> really um yeah i mean there's a huge amount of respect too because you know this organization that we volunteer for they we're trying to get lifers out who have done the change in their life and transitioned and we're writing them parole support letters. We're trying to offer transitional housing. So we're, we're doing a lot to help them get out and help them reenter. So um, there's a huge familiarity there when people do get out with our organization and anyone who works for it. And then, yeah, I don't know, because of that, I feel there's a, a, they they hold this organization to a they're protective of it that's great yeah the the um the the amount of work that you're doing um for you know for for the show the the work that you're doing for is it what is it is it prep right is, yeah um, it's partnership for reentry program what what are you seeing not just for the with the people that you're interviewing but just as a whole um, the people that are re-entering, I mean, are they, are they getting jobs? Are they getting housing? Um, do some of them fall back into their, their old ways? I mean, I, I know it's tough to kind of put a big blanket over all of it, but uh, yeah. what do you think from the people that you're working with? So I'm specifically working with ex-lifers, um, and they, I have found, actually don't have a terrible time finding jobs and oh, good. in many cases it's actually easier for them than people who've served shorter sentences and why, one reason, why is that well one reason is that if you're in for that amount of time you've probably held a job in prison so you have some kind of um trade or skill uh, whether it's you know working being a clerk and working on a computer makes sense. um yeah so you have you have some skill and then also in california employers aren't allowed to go back more than seven years on your oh, record okay. unless it's a, unless it's a school or they have i don't know what the other um contingencies are but you know i i know a lot of guys um that are driving for lyft right <laughs> and they you know committed a murder decades and decades and decades ago and yet 
they're, you know, they're able to do that, which is amazing. Um, so the job part, I think, from them, that's the easy part. The hard part is housing. Um, you're given six months of transitional housing for free, and then you're on your own. And like, how do you pay rent in LA? Period. Sure. Right. For anybody, right? Have a good job. That's right. So that's the hardest part. And then in terms of like going back, I've talked to a few people who have, um, it's usually for substance abuse. It's rarely for violence. Um, and then I've, I've talked to them because they've actually gotten back out. Um, so it happens. It's really rare, but it happens. You, um, like we talked at the top of the, the episode, so producer, writer, and activist. What, what does that mean? <laughs> which, which part? All of it? No, just activist, I guess. Oh, yeah. So I've been thinking a lot about that. Um, and I hesitated for a minute to even include that in my bio at all. The reason being there are people who fight every day for prison reform and social justice, and they're on the front lines, many of them who've been formerly incarcerated. Um, you know, they run organizations, they are pushing for policy change. And to me, like that, that's activism. On the other hand, there's all different kinds of activism. And I like, at my core, I feel like an activist. And this is, um, you know, I, this came out of work I was doing before to, mm. to help people um, get out if they were ready and do parole workshops. So, um, well, yeah. we, we can hear yeah. your voice, right? I mean, you're, you're obviously passionate about this. It, it sounds like it's something that, um, I mean, you're all in, not just yeah. with the show, but with the work that you're yeah. doing. And it comes across in your work and in this conversation as well. And that's, that's the part that's exciting for us, right? Uh, a lot of times we think about entrepreneurship, we think about telling stories and, you know, it's, it's the, it's cool and it's sexy, right? It's something awesome, mm -hmm. but there's nothing sexy about the story that you're telling, but it's real, right? And, yeah, and, and right. And I think, I mean, you, you don't ever, I mean, it happens all the time, but ex exploiting people who are already super vulnerable for their stories is not something that ever interests me. So yeah, there is a, there is a, a hope behind the podcast that is that, you know, we have more inclusion and more resources and more awareness so that reentry can be easier for people who are getting out. Um, you're, yeah. um, you, you're getting uh, recognition for the show. Where, what kind of response are you getting from uh, just the general public? Um, yeah, so, so far it's been really positive. Um, <laughs> it's funny, I get a lot of feedback on the music, which is what, what? Um, like, thanks, I guess. But <laughs> actually, no, that's actually really awesome because I have a composer, Vinay, who's the bomb. And it's a really big part of these episodes, actually. And I, I think a lot about how to integrate the music, how, how to break it up, how to have silences and moments of reflection. So I hope, hopefully what they're saying is like, you know, I like the breathing space in your episodes, but um, yeah, also like a lot of it is people saying, I've never heard stories like this. Oh, that's or, awesome. That's a great um, compliment. Good for you. Yeah. So that's always nice to hear. As I was reading kind of the bio and then stuff on, on the podcast, um, it, it was described as, uh, you know, telling stories from people um, with life on the margins right? Which is, which is great. Is, does that mean for you, you're still in season one? I'm, I'm assuming, and I'm hoping that there's going to be a season two. Is season oh, two yeah. um, going to be the same? You're going to try to tell the same stories of people that are, that are out, or are you going to find another group of, of people and individual stories to tell? Well, TBD, my friend. <laughs> really? Nice. Um, you, you, you sure you want to make a big it, announcement so. here on this show? Yeah, so I, I really would love to do season two from the inside. Um, and that's just going to be a matter of access and time and paperwork. So um, so it's not might, unheard of, right? I mean, you, you might be able to get permission to go do it from the inside? Yeah, 
I might. I mean, there's ear hustle, you know, they're on That's the inside. Right. Um, right. And I, film crews are allowed in. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible. It's definitely possible. Yeah. Well, good. We're, we're big fans of the work that you're doing. We love that you're so passionate and um, real about the work that, that uh, you're putting forth on the show and just life in general as, as an activist. Uh, um, we're going to continue to follow your career. But as we start to wrap up, tell me, when we have you back on the show in three years, <laughs> what are we, we going to be talking about? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, we're going to be talking about a, 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 an iteration of life on the outside that's called Live from the Outside. And it's oh. going to be a series of live storytelling events um, not dissimilar from the moth where people can stand up and, and share their story and it's live and it's community based and, um, community centered and, uh, yeah, it gives, um, formerly incarcerated people an opportunity to get up. It's like an open mic. essentially. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm in. All right. What, you keep us updated. We're going to be following you and, and, and the career here. And uh, again, we, we love what you're doing. For those that are interested in you and the show, where can we find you online? Yeah, so Instagram is the best place. It is at L-O-T-O underscore podcast. Um, L-O-T-O being life on the outside, obviously. So at L-O-T-O underscore podcast. Um, and then, uh, yeah, if you want to listen, we're on SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, um, those are the best places working on the website. It'll be up soon. Um, yeah, that's it. I love it. Not, so. We're not on Twitter. No Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Outliers, you can go to outlierhq.com. That's outlierhq.com. First of all, subscribe to our podcast, rate, review it, share with your friends. But there you're going to find links to Lucy's uh, social media accounts, the website when it's ready, to the podcast. Um, obviously, you can tell she's the real deal. She's doing something that she loves. Uh, she's a true outlier. And uh, again, Lucy, we thank you for being on our show. Yeah, um, thanks, We're, we're going to follow you from, from now on. So uh, keep up the good work. Yeah, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And I, I love the support. It means a lot. I love it. And we're heading back out to, uh, to LA for our next Outlier Podcast Festival next fall. So, uh, oh, hell yeah. I'm there. As well. Good. So, Outliers, we'll talk to you tomorrow.